Magic is the endowment of characters or objects in works of fiction or fantasy with real powers that do not naturally occur in the real world. Magic often serves as a plot device and has long been a component of fiction in many novels and movies. In the Harry Potter movie series, magic is depicted as a supernatural force that can be used to override the usual laws of nature. Witches and wizards train to learn how to control their magic. With young and untrained children, magic will manifest itself subconsciously in moments of strong emotion, which are apprehension, fear, anger, and sadness. In the Harry Potter universe, there have been multiple instances of armed conflict, which are in the first Wizarding War in 1970 and the second Wizarding War in 1995. This wars take place not only on the Wizarding world, but in the world of humans or muggles as well. Some of you might be curious whether the conflicts could be classified as international or non-international armed conflicts, and how the principles of necessity, proportionality and distinction may apply in cases of wizard and muggle conflicts. Now, we will apply the international humanitarian law to the conflicts in Harry Potter and discuss it through. The Harry Potter universe has its own law of the wizarding world, Specifically, in terms of international magical law, there are parallels that can be drawn to real international law. For example, the wizarding world equivalent to the United Nations is the International Confederation of Wizards, which created the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy to hide the wizarding world from moguls. The International Confederation of Wizards has many roles, such as overseeing the wizarding school, promoting peace, and may also censure governments for failing to conceal magical incidents from the non-magical community. Before classifying whether the magic wizarding wars is an international armed conflict or non-international armed conflict, we must first know the definition of it. International armed conflicts occur between two or more states, while the non-international armed conflicts occur between states and non-governmental armed groups, or only between armed groups. As provided under the Geneva Convention and customary IHO, there are differences in the law which may be applicable to international armed conflicts or non-international armed conflicts. In both of the first and second resorting wars involved states and Professor Dumbledore's army against Lord Voldemort and his army, the Death Eaters. During the first resorting war, Voldemort grew his army of Death Eaters and began trying to take over the resorting world by launching an assault on the British Ministry of Magic killing anyone who got in their way. The first resorting war was most largely restricted to British territory and the Death Eaters could constitute a non-state armed group given their organized command structure and capacity to carry out attacks. These groups met the requirements for a non-state party to a non-international armed conflict based on common Article 3 Geneva Conventions. Because they possessed organized command structures and had the capacity to sustain military operations. Furthermore, the first resorting war met the intensity requirements threshold for a non-international armed conflict. However, based on the additional Protocol 2 of the Geneva Convention, which applies in instances of state involvement in a non-international armed conflict, the requirement that non-state groups must possess territorial control is not fulfilled. This is because resorting conflicts are different from the Mughal Wars. The witches and wizards can time travel and teleport. It could therefore be argued that the mobile world requirement for territorial control under additional protocols too should not apply in the wizarding world. There are some principles of international humanitarian law that we all know. Right now, we will mainly discuss the principles of distinction, military necessity and proportionality if it was applicable in wizarding wars. The principle of distinction refers to distinguishing between civilians and combatants and between civilian objects and military objects. Meanwhile, the principle of military necessity permits measures which are actually necessary to accomplish a legitimate military purpose and are not otherwise prohibited by international humanitarian law. And the principle of proportionality is closely related to the principle of military necessity which prohibits attacks against military objectives to limit damage caused by military operations. In the Wizarding Wars, there are two types of civilians, which are wizards and muggles. For the wizard-on-wizard -wizard combat, 
normal principle of distinction should apply. But in cases where a wizard is fighting a muggle, it's very different because of the lack of power dynamic from the muggle. Thus, a special protection should apply. For instance, if we look at Article 77 of Additional Protocol 1, it provides special protection to children in armed conflict. The rule was created because the children cannot consent in the same way as adults and may not be as strong. If this logic is applied in the wizarding wars, it could be said that the Mughals should be afforded special protection during conflicts, because they did not have the same power in combat as the witches and wizards. Lastly, regarding the principle of military necessity and proportionality, it could be seen the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, in which Death is his attack and destroying the Millennium Bridge in London. On that case, civilian objects with no connection to the conflict are destroyed, along with those occupying them. So it could be a violation of the principle of military necessity and proportionality. On top of that, the tech was launched by Death Eaters could be classified as an act of terrorism, as Voldemort intended to spread fear amongst the Mughal and wizard populations. And terrorism is expressly prohibited under Article 33 of Geneva Convention 4 and Article 4 of Additional Protocol 2. The resulting wars in Harry Potter and the wars in real life are very different. But, some of the rules from international humanitarian law could be applied in Harry Potter. Mainly, the general principles of international humanitarian law. Rules of war were made to limit on the destruction and suffering caused by armed conflict. It could be seen from the Harry Potter series, if magic was real, then the war could be more chaotic and more destructive. It will impact innocent lives and the ones without power can't do anything to prevent it. And to protect it, laws were made to restrain the destruction that could happen if laws did not exist. <laughs>